Hello everyone and welcome back. This will be the last episode about towers for a while. We just need to get the slow effects to work and then we will move on to the next topics. So make sure you subscribe. But now let's get going with this episode. Let's take a look at where we left off. So last episode we added explosions to our cannons and also some AoE damage. In this episode we're gonna add the slow to our wizard. So whenever an enemy is hit by the effect, they get slowed. So let's begin with that. And I think we can do this rather easy and quick actually. Uh, in this update in projectile manager, we have the loop for projectiles and then we check if the projectile is hitting the enemy. So let's go here. And since we need to loop through our enemies, we have to use this method right here to set the slow and check how long the enemy should be slowed. So first we check for the enemies being alive, then we check for the bounce if it collides, and it does. Then we hurt the enemy, but in here we can also, if p.getProjectileType equals chain, chains, then we say e.slow. And this method doesn't exist in the enemy class, so let's create it. Uh, let's put it right above move and below hurt. So public void slow. And this method right here is actually only going to need one variable to make the enemy slow, which will be a integer. Let's create that. So protected int slow tick. And we don't need to use any boolean or, add, or something like that. We just need this variable. And slow tick will be set to zero whenever this happens. And in our move method right here, before we go to our switch, we're going to check if slow tick is less than, and this move is updated every update, so it's 60 updates per second. So we can check 60 times how many seconds we want the enemy to be slowed for. So in this case, let's say two seconds, just to see how it looks. If that's the case, then we say slow tick plus plus. And now we get to decide how slow he should move. So speed times equal 0.5. This makes it half the speed. Or maybe we want something else like 25% of the speed. So let's set the speed to... Let's try with half. Half the speed. So this obviously checks every update. So we set the speed to half its value and then we go down. And in case the slow tick goes above two seconds in this case, then we don't do the speed change and it continues like normal. And I think this is a very simple way without using booleans or timers, just simple integer ticks, whether or not they are within a certain value. So let's give this a try. Uh, I think everyone is moving quite slow for some reason. Ah, yeah, that's true. I thought it was lagging, but uh, remember we start <laughs> we start the slow tick at zero, so this applies right away, which is not the one we want. So let's just say equals 120, but that's gonna be that's bad programming. Programming. So let's add another one. Protected in uh, slow tick limit equals 120 and then we set this one to slow tick limit and then we check down here for oops slow tick limit so if you want to change this value we don't have to change it everywhere else we just change it up here and that's much easier so let's try it now enemies move right uh, let's get the wolf as soon as he gets in range yep He's being slowed. Perfect. Now the bat as well. So the slow works. Perfect. And it's not more difficult than that. But maybe we want some sort of effect on the enemies. So we can actually see that they are slow. Not just that they are moving slower. So let's do that next. And there is probably many ways of doing this. More advanced than the one I have in mind. And what I'm thinking about is to simply display a ice effect on their feet if they are slowed. And if they're not slowed, then we stop drawing it. So first we're going to go to our draw method for our 
enemies, which are in our enemy manager, of course. Uh, update, update. And where do we have the draw? Here. Here we have the draw. So first we draw the enemy, then the health bar, but then we also want to draw draw effects. And we want to pass in the E and the graphics. Create the method. And we actually going to need a method that returns true whether or not the enemy is slowed. Because right now we just take care of the slow in their move method, but we actually want a want a boolean return. So at the very bottom we say public boolean is slowed. And we don't need to return a variable, but we're going to re return and we're going to take a look at our var variables name. We have slow tick and slow tick limit. Uh, actually, let's uh, copy this line. Return if slow tick is less than slow tick limit. So this returns, no, not if, return slow tick less than slow tick limit. So as long as the slow tick is less than slow tick limit, it returns true, which is that the enemy is slow. So that's all we need. We can copy that method actually. And in here, if e dot is slowed, then we draw the slow effect. But we have no slow effects. But I actually added a icy effect here at or in our sprite atlas. We still had one room for one more image, so let's use it. But first we're going to need the image. And up here, we can remove that old one and add a, a private buffered, buffered image, slow effect. And in our constructor, we say load effect image. And we simply create a method here load effect image and we take the slow effect equals load save get sprite atlas get sub image so it's the last one 32 times 9 32 times 2 and of course 32 by 32 so this return the last image in the atlas. So now we have the image and all we have to do now is to draw it whether or not the enemy is slowed. So g2d dot draw, no we don't have g2d here, we have g dot draw image x and y, we want e dot get x, e dot get y, no, uh, that's wrong but uh, let's do it like so and then for image it's slow effect. So now it makes more sense, but it is returning float. So int we need. So now if it's working, then we should have slow effects on the enemy when they do get slowed. So let's wait, uh, let's place it there and wait for the enemies. And uh, yeah. We have a slow effect on our enemies and it's looking a little bit more like it should. So this is great. Yeah, this looks great. Let's end the episode right here. I think we're done with the towers for a while. They are working as we want and we can change the speed, damage and the range if we want to. But next up, I think it will be about waves. A tower defense game always have enemy waves, so that is something we will start with. But before you go, please leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss out the next topic about the game. And until then, take care and I hope to see you in the next episode. Bye.